And now we'll look at the orientation constraint. Uh, what I've set up here is just a very simple rig. I've just got a simple set of bones uh, linked together down to this one being the bottom of the hierarchy. And I've just got these controlling these boxes. So I uh, can see on the chain these boxes linked in. This is just representing very simply the way that bones would move a mesh. Uh, say for example this had skin on it and this was a full body mesh. One of the problems with animation is that we can't actually get to the bones a lot of the time without switching this mesh off. Uh, and that's a lot of extra work to keep having to go in and hide the geometry, select the bones, um, bring back the geometry. We could go in and select a um, selection filter so it could just say okay click on bones which allows us to click on those. But again, that can be quite tricky uh, to see what's going off. And sometimes you want the mesh on to see how it's deforming as you're going through the animation, not just uh, seeing the bone structure. So what we can do is use control objects. So we've looked at these a bit with some of the other constraints. Uh, what I've got here is just a circle, spline, and uh, I want to bring it in to control, say, this top rotation, or this rotation here. So basically what I want to happen, is I want to be able to rotate this object and have this object rotate accordingly or this, this bone reacting accordingly. So, the thing I can't do is I can't just link this directly into this. Because what's going to happen there, and it's just uh, like this in, is it's going to break this chain down here. So now when I'm going to rotate these, it's actually broke that link between these two because this is now linked to uh, this bone is now linked to this and this isn't linked into this structure at all. I could maybe go in and link this one to this bone, but that's not really the best way to do it. So let's just undo. Make sure I've done that. Okay, so we've got that back. So a better way to do it is to use an orientation constraint. So the orientation constraint can be put over the top of this select and link uh, and have an overriding control over the rotation on this object that's caused by this object in the hierarchy. So um, what we want to do first of all is uh, we need to match the pivot point up to this object, to this bone. We need those matched up so the rotation this rotates from this point. Uh, it's just a good way to do this. If we, um, I mean I could set it up and it would work um, but the, the control object quickly gets lost in the mesh. So in fact, let's just have a look at that. Let's just make sure we just save this, um, just in case we break it. Let's call this constraint. And this is orientation. So we'll start. So uh, as I say, we could grab this bone and go into animation constraints, and we can go out to our orientation constraint, and go up to this and click. We have a similar problem to look at target. Uh, because of these differing coordinates on uh, different local coordinates on these objects, like straight away trying to rotate it to, to match the, uh, the coordinates of the other system. Again, I can go in this, as I said earlier, with all rotation based constraints, we have this keep initial offset. So I can bring that up. So, what we can do now is rotate this object out. You can see as it's rotating, it does do the rotation from the right position, but the way that it reads, you can see there when I drag this down, we start to hide, uh, to lose this control object in the mesh. So a better way to do this, let's just load that file back up again. Let's uh, orientation start. It doesn't really matter about the position of the object itself, it's just the pivot point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into pivot only. And I'm going to align it to this bone. Uh, I am also going to align the uh, orientation of this. Uh, okay, and pivot to pivot. And just okay that. So let's do the orientation again. Animation, constraints, orientation, constraint. Let's take it up. And actually, um, 
one thing hopefully you will notice there is I've not had to take this keep initial offset on this uh, because I'm matching the orientation of the pivot point uh, of this control object to the bone it's actually fixed all of that out so whereas that didn't really show up on the look at constraint it really does and the importance of that really does show up here so now you can see as I rotate the control object it does rotate um, from the right position it keeps it parallel to that particular part of the mesh so you would always be able to see that, that thing now one problem is if I start moving these about we are going to lose that constraint but it is just a matter of grabbing this and just linking it in to the bone before it. Okay. So now that will rotate around and then we can rotate that one round and it stays in position. And that's the orientation constraint.